of America. I was president of his great country, and I know about his great achievements. But I think on occasion we need to stop and see what is there about America that can be changed, that can be improved. This is not the kind of speech that most people make. But I want to just implant it in your mind, particularly the students who will be here in the future. What can we do to improve our own lives? Let me go down the list. Let's talk about peace. That's one of the major attributes that a human being would have in his life. And I would say that the major religions would also have these same kinds of things in mind. That doesn't matter whether you're a, a Christian or a Jew or a Muslim or a Hindu or a Buddhist. The major religions advocate peace. They also advocate taking care of the environment. They also advocate helping people who are in need. Let me just talk about a few of those things now. Since World War II, the United States has been at war in Korea, Vietnam, Cambodia, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Grenada, Libya, Panama, Somalia, Haiti, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Iraq, Afghanistan, and many others. Almost constantly since World War II, our nation has been at war. I would like for our country in the future to have a reputation as a champion of peace. I think that's one of the characteristics of a superpower. My wife and I were on the way to the inauguration in January. And I tried to think of anywhere on earth at this moment, the United States is trying to promote peace. And when we got to Washington, John Kerry, then a senator, but he had already been designated as the next Secretary of State, he and his wife met with me and Roslyn in the hotel room. And I said, John, can you think of anywhere on earth now that the United States is trying to promote peace? He said, no. But he said, when I get in office as Secretary of State, I'm going to go to the Mideast and we'll start again. So at least in the Mideast now, we're trying that. Let's think a moment about human rights. The United States was in the forefront of developing the Universal Declaration of Human Rights at the end of the Second World War. Eleanor Roosevelt, the widow of Franklin D. Roosevelt, went there and declared the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. There are 30 paragraphs in the Declaration of Human Rights. The United States at this moment is violating 10 of the 30 paragraphs. We now are detaining people in prison without a trial and without an accusation presented against them for life. Half the people in Guantanamo Bay in the prison there have never been tried and they've never been accused of a crime, but they'll be in prison for the rest of their lives. And the United States is now using drones, as you know, to go into foreign countries with whom we are not at war and committing executions. The United States also is the only industrialized nation with a death penalty. And we have the most prisoners of any nation on earth. In fact, we have seven times as many people in prison now as we did when I left the White House in 1981. And we, most of this punishment is against poor people and minorities and the mentally ill. Our democracy now is one that has lost the confidence of many of our people. Uh, we, as you know, we are heavily infected with massive infusions of money. After the Citizens United ruling of the Supreme Court, there's an unlimited amount of corporate money that can go into campaigns. Most of this money is spent on negative commercials to destroy the reputation of your opponent. And that opposition or negative attitude, the animosity goes over into Washington. 
and a lot of people have lost confidence uh, in our government as well. In the environment, we haven't had a champion of environment since George Bush Sr. He went to uh, Rio de Janeiro and committed our nation to be in the forefront of dealing with global warming. We've now relinquished that, that authority. I would hope that in the future, that the United States of America, as it has been in the past, dealing with challenges, but do what it is now. We have a chance at this moment, with a new president in a second term, with 12 years after 9-11, with an opportunity for the country of, of, of our, that we love to, to meet the challenge which is always done in the past, when they have difficulties to reach for greatness. And I would like to see in the future America become a nation that's a champion of peace, a nation that's champion of human rights, a nation that's champion of environment, a champion of alleviating uh, suffering around the world, a champion of having a pure democracy where everyone feels confidence in our government. Those are some of the challenges ahead of us. And I want to remind you, I'm not criticizing America because I know that America is the greatest nation on earth. And I would like to see here at Lafayette College, a kind of a core of inspiration and searching for greatness that could be the core that would bring our country to realize the same kind of dreams that Bob Pastor had when he was a student here and he's brought back here with his wife to bless this country, this country again through this small college that can be the heartbeat of democracy, freedom, and human rights in the future. Thank you very much.